Welcome to DIY for Homeowners by Mother Daughter Projects. I'm Steph. I'm Vicki. And today we're making a raised container to hold dog food. When I got my dog a year ago, I got a great container to hold her dog food in, but every time I'd fill up her bowl, I had to get on the floor and get the food out, and sometimes her nose would get in the food. And it was just a hassle, so I wanted to come up with a way to be able to store her food where I could get to it easily and it wasn't a chore every time I fed her. Now we use found materials to build this container, but you could easily buy lumber and make it to your specifications. We want to thank the Home Depot for sponsoring today's project, and as always, there'll be a link in the description to the tools and materials that we're using. All right, let's get started. We recently cleaned out our scrap wood pile and came across these wood floor planks that we've had for a couple years now. I thought these would work out perfect for this project, even though I knew it would add a little extra work to the process. The first step was to glue the planks together for each side. We recently bought these DeWalt trigger clamps with a deeper clamping throat, and they were perfect for this application. To cut them to size, we originally used our Dremel Multimax, which worked well, but didn't give us the smoothest cut that we wanted. We actually went over to the table saw to get a straighter cut. We worked as a team, as you can see. You don't have to use a table saw, you could use a circular saw. Just use what you have. Next was the glue up. We just wanted to use glue as we didn't want any nails showing on the outside of the planks. We reinforced the edges with square dowels and glued them into place. We used a scrap piece of plywood to make the shelf in the middle to separate food storage from the bottom storage. Because 40 pounds of dog food is heavy, we are reinforcing the shelf with screws. In here I'm making a pilot hole by using a drill bit. And now I'm using an impact driver to drive the screw. We again glued the dowels in place for the top section where the food will sit. And then we just glued on the wood front. We clamped and waited for it to dry. We'll talk more about this in the end, but we recessed the bottom of the base to the same depth as the casters that we're using. For the bottom storage, we're making a door that will open. Here I'm driving some hinges that will hold the door in place. Here we're using a spring-loaded nail set and it basically just marks a little spot where we're gonna put the screw and it makes it easier for attaching our screw. And then we're using our Dremel Go to attach the screws in place. And this is the hinges that will be used for the top of the container. We're using a magnetic system to hold the door closed. If your dog's a little more curious, you may wanna add some more security here. We're using a right angle adapter on our drill driver to get better leverage and screwing the latch into place. I attach the magnet plate onto the door and done. To finish off the lid, we use construction adhesive to attach the molding to the sides. And it's time to try it out. I put the food container in place and poured in the food. We had no idea if this shelf would hold the weight of the food, but it did. I also filled up the bottom section with dog supplies and found it held the same amount of stuff as I was storing in a five gallon Home Depot bucket. And I love the look of it. It blends in really nicely in the corner and Mac doesn't even know where her food is anymore. What we learned. We actually built this a couple months ago, so I've been using it for all that time, and there's been a couple of changes we've made since that time. The first thing is we originally had an idea to hold the top in place, like when it's open, and that didn't work out, so I ended up getting 90 degree hinges so that when I have the, when I raise it up, it stays in place. I don't have to have it lean against anything, so we'll put a link to these, these hinges that we used. The other thing that we did was we added this wrapping paper, and there's a company that will design anything you want with your pet's picture on it. So we put this on and it's on here with tacky glue and we just love the pop of color it gives. And one thing that we didn't really talk about in the video was how we make this move. So as you know, it moves forward and, back. forward and backward really easily and it's on appliance casters and appliance casters are typically used for appliances to just move them back and forth in a space and they can hold a lot of weight. Well, and they're really inexpensive. They're cheaper than regular casters that you can purchase. So we actually just glued four to the bottom and here's a picture of what the bottom looks like. I only needed it to move 
forwards and back, not really side to side, so this was a perfect solution for this. And if you notice right here on the front, there's a Greyhound, and this is one of my, actually this is one of my very first scroll saw projects. So we just painted out with a little bit of deco art metallic paint, and we just hot glued it with construction adhesive to the front. Yeah, for a little personalized touch. Yes. If you want more pet related projects, give us a thumbs up on this video, and let us know in the comments about your pet. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye. Not recording. If you want to see some more pet projects, you can check out actually this one in this video right here. Or you can check out this one right here for cats. We don't discriminate. Cats, no, we dogs. Don't. Cats, dogs. We'll do fish. We'll do anything, really. Fish? What are you going to do with the fish? We can make a fish tank.